is going on guys, this is Induced Rhino here, back for another commentary in Forza Horizon 2. So today we are going to be doing the third part of the car comparison series. And yes, if you are new to this series, what we basically do is we take a look at and sort of compare three different cars, whether if they're made by the same automobile, just different generations or something like that, or if they're made by different automobiles but the same sort of car. Like, for example, the first part we did the three main hybrid hypercars, so that was the McLaren P1, the LaFerrari, and the Porsche 918. Those were the three main ones and the latest ones. And in the last part we did three different types of Ferraris, just comparing different generations of the 360 CS, the 430 Scuderia, and the 458 Italia. But yeah, in this video, oh, and... If you haven't seen those two videos, I recommend you check it out, or you can just watch the third part. Doesn't matter, it's not really a continuing, continued series, just different types of videos. Yeah, and so this one we're going to be taking a look at the three main SUVs, so 2015 Porsche Macan Turbo, 2014 Land Rover Ranger Supercharged. To me, this is my favourite SUV and probably the best. And the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT. Again, really good SUV. So, yes, with the Porsche Macan, I did choose this car over the Cayenne. The reason today is I slightly prefer the Cayenne, but the Macan is just more suitable because it's the later version. Okay, so you got a speed of 6.2 and handling 6.4. Decent speed and handling, and with the handling being 2% more than speed, should handle fine. And have good, okay grip, but it is all-wheel drive. we got acceleration 7.6. Now whopping 9.2 for launch. We've got 400 horsepower, so not the biggest amount of horsepower for an SUV, but it's good enough. Definitely not as much as a Lamborghini Urus, though. 404 pound for the torque, so same amount of power as torque, which is pretty good. And it weighs 4.2 thousand pounds, so not the heaviest SUV, not as heavy compared to this, the Range Rover. Over 5.5 thousand pounds. But we've got whopping 510 horsepower. So, this is the most powerful and fastest SUV next to the Lamborghini Urus. And we've got 461 pound foot of torque. Not too much of a difference between the between the Porsche Macan and this. And we've got 51% font. Mm, we don't really need to worry about the font. That's not important. And we got we got a speed of 6.7. Handling 6.2, acceleration 7.4, launch 8.5, so not as good launch as the Macan. The Jeep Grand Cherokee, we got a speed of 6.2 and also handling 6.2, so similar speed and handling to the Macan. Might handle, might have slightly less grip. Might have slightly less grip. But we got good acceleration, really good launch, still not as good as the Macan, though. We got 470 horsepower, so. More than the Macan, but less than the Range Rover. Got 465 pound foot of torque, so we got the same amount as we do on the Range Rover, I believe. Yeah. 5,150 pounds, so heavier than the Macan, but still lighter than the Range Rover, so that's why we hop into the Range Rover first, because it's the most powerful out of them all. And this is my favourite SUV. We take a look at the interior as well as exterior. And I'll see you there. Alright, so here we are in the Range Rover taking a look at it. So, just start with that back window there, as usual. Yeah. So, you got the Range Rover badge there in capital letters. And what I like about this is because that's always been there on the regular Range Rover. It's also there on the Range Rover Sport, but on the old Range Rover Sport, it, the Range Rover badge was at the bottom, right down there, which I didn't like. But now it's on every single Range Rover mate, the Evoque, even the Sport. But this is the Supercharged V8 version. And got the tail autobiology badge there, I believe. I believe that's what it says. I think. Um, sorry. So yeah, what I like about this is the t tail light shaped of a foot and has every single tail light. The tail light, of course, brake light. And the uh, indicator. And if you can see, you probably can't see, we've got very 
just visible exhaust pipes down there. And yeah, looking at the side, just the side of most SUVs is just as per normal four doors and big four doors. But no, this is quite unique, this side, because what I like about this is the door handles. I like the look at the door handles. And yeah, the doors look slightly bigger because this is the biggest car out of the three. And I like that stripe you get. Really like that. And the light on the rear view mirrors. Yeah, so the, the side does have a unique look because of that stripe there. And the line. Well, the line of that part of the door does look the same. But the line the line for the other door looks different. Okay, so the, looking at the front, the beautiful front. Not very much down there to look at. Little radiator indicator there. And we got some intakers here. Three intakers, a bit like robotic teeth, robotic shark teeth, it reminds you of. Which is also on the Porsche Mechanic set. They're a lot bigger on the Porsche Mechanic, and I believe you get four or five of those instead of three. And I do like those, where the air comes in. And the headlights, very different to the tail lights. They're just regular shape with two lights, one regular light and one different shaped light. And the Rayé grill, you get the Range Rover batch up there again. And in the Rayé grill, you get those little holes in there, which I wouldn't say that's fishy, but that's what they like doing, little spaces in the Rayé grill. The Land Rover badge there. Same shape as the uh, Bugatti badge. I don't know, but this is not a Bugatti. It's a Land Rover. Yeah, that's what I like about this car. There are lots of unique features here. Like what the British like doing. And why are we looking around? We just had a look at it before, but let's look at the interior. So, got a nice looking steering wheel there. We've got leather part in the middle. But the only thing is that Land Rover badge in the steering wheel isn't in the round logo. And you get buttons on the side of the steering wheel. And, yeah, the side, the rest of the interior just... Love that luxurious look there. Very luxurious look. British luxury... British luxur luxury look, sorry. That just, that part of the interior just lets you know that you're in a British handmade car. One of the most popular British cars ever made. So, beautiful, luxurious interior look. Oh, this isn't a sound. Awesome sound there for an SUV. Wonderful for a supercharged V8. And forgot to say about the interior, the dials are sort of digital dials, unlike on the older Range Rover. They're digital dials. By the looks of them. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, what I want to talk about is when you listen to the sound of the engine in the interior, you sort of hear that little sort of squealing noise inside. But when you listen to it outside, you don't hear the squealing noise. All you hear outside is the engine. But when you get inside, you hear both the engine and the supercharger. And I believe the supercharger is what's responsible for making that little squealing noise. And it's the exact same for when you listen to the sound of the Ford GT in the interior. You hear that squealing sound. It's a, in the Ford GT, the squealing sound is a lot louder. Yeah, we just crashed, but we don't need to worry about resetting the damage of FOMO because we've just turned the damage off, so it doesn't matter if we crash, but let's not try and crash too much. And yeah, just looks even more luxurious when it's raining, just lights up, sunlight. It looks even more luxurious when it's pouring down rain or when it's night time. That's why this is my favourite SUV. It goes unlike any other SUV and looks unlike any other SUV in both the interior and exterior. And yeah, about that squealing sound. Yeah, you, you hear the squealing sound in the interior of the Ford GT also, except that's much louder. So the squealing sound this is sounds like sounds like a baby lion crying. I'm doing that terribly, I'll stop. But in the Ford GT, same sort of sound, because you get the same sort of energy, supercharged V8, except it's even more supercharged, so the sound, the squealing sound inside the Ford GT sounds more like 
a baby lion bawling and sobbing, but the sound of it in this one sounds like a baby lion just crying. I'll stop from you, but seriously, when you change gears, yeah, it just sounds like inside baby lion crying and not really, I don't know, but I mean, when you change gears, it just sounds like it's made a sort of noise while it's crying, like, like owl or something like that. So yeah, let's stop driving the interior, you see, you no longer hear the squealing sound again in the exterior. I can't stop looking at the front and side of it. It's a beautiful, unique side. Because you get big doors, stripe on the side and the back door, the line on the back door. The line on the back door, whatever you call it, has um, different shape. Perfectly shape. Perfect shape. The line on the back door. But the line on the front door, just normal straight line. Now we get into the garage, and we move on to the next SUV, which is probably my second or third favourite SUV in the game. Alright, Sports Utility Heroes, and we just have to get in the right order, I'm sorry guys. So, the next SUV, yes, the next SUV is the Jeep Grand Cherokee. My second or third favourite SUV. So, starting off, you get more visible exhaust pipes down there, which is good. And, yeah, you had some sort of indicators there, or I don't know. But, like, unlike on the Range Rover, it's all on one light. And, but the light, the tail lights on this is more bigger, is bigger. Which is surprising, because the ones on the Range Rover are smaller in different shape, and it can fit all the lights when this fits all the lights except for the ones at the bottom. Yeah, and it goes there. And... But, yes, that's why I st still prefer the tail lights on the Range Rover, the upside-down foot shape. <laughs> Reminds you of Italy, how the country Italy is shaped like foot, obviously. And, yeah, the boot, different sort of boot, unlike tailgate on the Range Rover, but what I like on the Grand Cherokee is that the boot's really easy to open. Opening the boot is similar to opening the doors with a handle, which I like. And it's easier, unlike we have to push some buttons. Jeep badge up there. Mind you of the saying, I bought a Jeep. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so the side. Get, I wouldn't say unique. Unlike the, well, maybe a tiny bit unique side. Definitely not like the Range Rover, because... No, it's just like a normal side SUV, except for the fact that you get the Grand Cherokee badge on the side, which I like. And you get aluminium door handles, and the doors are slightly smaller. And the lines on both door handles, the lines for both doors, for where they open, for the cracks are the same shape. But I do slightly prefer the rims on the Jeep Grand Cherokee, and you get a red brake infester. Yeah, like I said, I like calling it an infester because the real name just sounds boring. Jeep badge over there again, which is good. And now the radiator grill. Oh, we'll set up with the headlights, yeah. It's weird, the tail lights are bigger than the tail lights on the Range Rover and can fit all the lights except for one. But the headlights on this are smaller than the ones on the Range Rover. And yes, it can also fit two, li two lights. And one's in, and both are different shapes. So the Ray A grill, I just like how you get those seven different shapes on the Ray A grill. Like, they wouldn't, they just like putting different shapes in a Ray A grill. Like they do in the Range Rover. So the interior, not as good as the interior in the Range Rover. Cause, and you could say, doesn't look European. Doesn't even look American, honestly. I don't know what it looks like. It looks like. Looks. gives you a sort of. Asian look, but I do like that dashboard. In the middle, you get that gauge, the speedometer, and that thing in the middle. I'm not sure what that is. And get the other two gauges, the other gauges on the side. 
on the right side you get two gauges, the petrol gauge and cooling gauge. And on the left side you get the tachometer. And you get a normal steering wheel. Definitely not as good as the steering wheel on the Range Rover, but at least you get the buttons on the side and paddle brakes. Nice sound there. Still preferring the Range Rover. And yeah, as I was saying about the front, so the Range Rover, I do prefer the radiator grill on this than on the Range Rover, because the Range Rover, on the radio grill, the Range Rover, they put little holes in it. They put little holes in it, but instead of just making it one big radio grill. And they did the same on the Grand Cherokee. They like putting holes in it, like putting some spaces in it, more like holes, not to make not to make it look like one gigantic radio grill, which would just make it look ugly. But the spaces. You have arrived at your so yeah, the in the sound of the engine in both the interior and exterior sound exactly the same. But yeah, except the radio grill on the Range Rover is more like holes, little holes, little spaces to, for the air to go through. But the ones on the Jeep Grand Cherokee are more like spaces for the air to go through, and are a lot bigger than the spaces the radio grill on the Range Rover. So that's what I like much prefer the radio grill on the Grand Cherokee and slightly prefer the rims on the Grand Cherokee. But everything else, everything else is not as good as features on the Range Rover. So we have decent amount of speed and decent amount of grip on this. I believe this is the SRT version, which I find weird. Even on the steering wheel, instead of getting the Jeep badge, you get the SRT badge. It doesn't make you, by looking at the interior, if you if you weren't allowed to look at the exterior, like if you had to be in the interior the whole time in this game, you weren't allowed to see the exterior, and you didn't know the name of this car, you wouldn't think this is a Jeep Grand Cherokee. You'd think this is probably maybe a Viper, but the interior of the new Viper is way different to the interior of this. But if you had no idea what the interior of the Viper looked, of the SRT Viper looked like, and you weren't allowed to go into the exterior of cars. And you didn't know the name of this, you'd think this was an SRT bar because it has SRT on the steering wheel instead of the Jeep badge. But when you look at the exterior, you know that's an SUV and you know that it's a Jeep. That you bought a Jeep. Yeah. So, we do have slightly better grip on this than on the Range Rover. Not sure about the handling, probably handles slightly better. Because the handling of the Range Rover is 6.7, I believe. The, hand, the speed of the Range Rover is 6.7, I believe the handling is 6.1 or 6.2. So the handling is less than the speed. So, photo mode. Oh, I forgot that we had damage turned off. Why did I do that? Oh, well. So, yeah, we did. What? What? Why is the damage on? I thought I turned damage off. Oh well, we'll just reset it. This is so weird. I thought I turned damage off, but must have turned back on. Either that or I didn't actually turn it off. But it will be off in the next part, I promise you. Well, I can't fully promise you, but I will sort of promise. Okay? Yeah, so, looking at the side. Probably the only unique look on the side is that you get the Grand Cherokee badge on the side. But on the Range Rover, you get the stripe in the middle and different shaped door. Different shaped doors, bigger doors. And. Yeah. So now we move on to the next and final car, which is the Porsche Macan. Really good SUV again. Wouldn't say it's the best because. A Porsche and yeah so here we are in the Macan so as you can see after looking at the Range Rover it is a lot smaller you get but you get two exhaust pipes down there I guess the Germans like adding more exhaust pipes to their cars unlike the British and Americans and like on the Grand Cherokee you get the indicators down there and on every Porsche you get the Automobile name in capital letters, which is always Porsche, and 
the name of the and the name of the Porsche in smaller running rowing letters. And that says Macan Turbo, obviously. And yeah, the headlights like just very simple tail lights, sorry. Just can't see a lot of lights in there, just all red. But I'd I slightly prefer the tail lights on the Grand Cherokee than this, and much prefer the tail lights on the Range Rover, the upside down foot. But I guess that's okay, I guess. So moving on to the side, we I'd say we kind of have a unique look on the side because Porsche don't usually make four door cars. This and the pa this and this the Cayenne and the Panamera are the only three four door Porsches. Well, I'd say wouldn't you say the Macan and Cayenne Cayenne counts as one because they're both SUVs and are the same size and go very similar to each other. So I'd say the Macan and Cayenne count as two, count as one, sorry. So yeah, the rims, uh, like you get some, the rims similar to the shape of a little kid drawing a sun, but not the same colour, obviously. Yeah, so you get some sort of stripe there. Don't know what I think about that really, but I'd say the I'd probably say this has about the same unique look as on the Range Rover because it's not every day because when this car, when this and the Panamera were first released, it wasn't every day where you saw a four-door Porsche. So looking at the front, you get that night, that nice surprise look, just like he has just showed up, he has just showed up in a house and has been surprised for his birthday. And I was wrong. Those intakers, I said... The Range Rover had three, and I thought this one had four, but no, it has two. But they're still a lot bigger. Alright, so that's all we need to look at the exterior. The interior, so yeah, we got a nice interior. Similar to all Porsches, so... Nice German look there. Sat nav there, and... Glove box there, and dashboard. And if you can see in the middle, you get that little clock there. And the dials, digital dials, similar to the ones on the 911 Turbo S, except they're slightly smaller on the Turbo S, and you get five instead of three. And the steering wheel, probably like the Grand Cherokee, sort of simple steering wheel compared to the Range Rover, but let's listen to the sound. Nice sound there. Why did I do that? I'm sorry. So yeah, this has the best launching, so got pretty great launch there. And so far we're doing pretty good. So all these cars so far are different, like all of them have unique looks in the interior and exterior and go differently. Just a little bit. Like one's this and the Grand Cherokee have the same top speed, about the same top speed. But this has better launch, and the Range Rover has the best top speed, and this has the best launch. And the Range Rover and the Macan both have unique looks. The Range Rover has big doors, different door crack, like door line, back, the line on the back door is different, and you get that stripe. The unique look on the side of this is that it's a four-door Porsche. That's the unique look you get, four-door Porsche, because... Because, because this, because the Porsche SUV, so both this one and the Cayenne, which I'd say would count as one, and the Panamera are the only two four-door Porsches. Yeah, but the Panamera was the first ever four-door Porsche. And it's a bit like, you more like a bigger Porsche. We'll just reset the damage there. Bigger Porsche. So yeah, you know, I mean, you get what I'm saying. Unique look because of the unique look because of the four-door look on a Porsche. And before, until 2009, when the Panamera, and then when the Panamera was released, when the Panamera was first released, and you saw it on the road, you're like, oh, that's not every day. You, s you don't see that every day. And what you mean by saying you don't see that every day is you don't see a four-door Porsche every day. And then. Two or three years later came the Cayenne 
and then the Makan. So, if you want to count the Kion and Makan as the Kion and Makan as two different, two different Porsches, oh, I took the wrong lane. Oh well. If you didn't want to count the Kion and the Makan as two different Porsches, you'd say, you'd say there are only, you'd say that there are only three. There are only three Porsches ever made with four doors. But if you were to count the Cayenne and Macan as just one Porsche, because they're both SUVs and both are the same size and go very similar, then you'd say that only two Porsches are made with four doors. The Macan, the Macan slash Cayenne, and the Panamera. But if you were to count the two SUVs as this two each, it would be the Macan, Cayenne, and Panamera. Those are the three Porsches with the unique look on the side. Like for example, the unique look at the front of the 911 is that you get the headlights sticking out. And in this part, I might make a video comparing the three different modern 911s. So maybe the GT2 RS, GT3 RS, and the Turbo S. So... That right. it pretty so much ends the video. And I forgot to say about the headlights on the Macan that, that you get, unlike the Grand Cherokee and the Range Rover, you get two lights, but they're in the same shape, both round. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please show some support. Please show some support. Leave a like, leave a comment, and if you really enjoyed it, maybe even subscribe if you want to see more videos. So... If you want to see the next parts, then show some feedback, and if you do, I will see you there. Bye-bye.